for the very last um, topic that we're going to be looking at in unit one area study one biology um, we're going to look at plants uh, more specifically we're going to look at the vascular system of plants all right which is a bit like the circulatory system in humans all right um, so this this here is saying that notice this plant biology teacher is upset and asks what's stomata all right so stomata are this system here in plants that are actually really important in terms of water and carbon dioxide and oxygen movement pause the video here and have a go at these three quick questions um, so the first question is asking to explain in terms of the limiting factors of photosynthesis at what time during a 24-hour period would you expect the highest rate of photosynthesis so hopefully you recognize that at midday we're going to have the highest rate of photosynthesis because we can have the most light all right so what do we mean by in terms of the limiting factors of photosynthesis all right so obviously during the day or and night time we're going to have a similar level of carbon dioxide available all right a similar level of water available all right what's actually going to limit the extent to the rate of photosynthesis is going to be the light intensity All right. So by limiting the light intensity, we're going to have different rates of photosynthesis throughout the day. Okay. So what is the role of ribosomes in the cell? Hopefully you recognize that ribosomes are the uh, location in a cell where we're going to have the manufacture of proteins. Um, so how does osmosis differ from simple diffusion? Explain the answer in the help of a label diagram. So here's my label diagram of a cell. <laughs> and we're going to have things moving in into and out of this cell through the plasma membrane and through proteins. Right? Let's say we have some carbon dioxide out of the cell. And that carbon dioxide wants to move into the cell because we have a high concentration and low concentration. Um, Hopefully you can recognize that that carbon dioxide is just going to move through simple diffusion. On the other hand, if we were to have a high concentration of water, so low solute concentration outside the cell, and a low concentration of water, so high solute concentration inside the cell, that water is going to move into the cell. But this time, instead of through simple diffusion, we're going to have it happen through osmosis which is just a simple diffusion of water notice that both of these um, types of diffusion they're the same in the way that they move directly through the plasma membrane all right but they're differing in terms of what is actually moving all right so in the study design we're back to that functioning systems part of the study design and we're going to study vascular plants with reference of how the cells are specialized and organized all right once again the cells into tissues tissues into organs for the intake of and movement and loss of water from the plant okay so we've discussed photosynthesis right so photosynthesis that equation which involves carbon dioxide and water turning into glucose and oxygen gas and also we're going to get a net output of water as well all right but we have these things being used and created in photosynthesis so how do the what happens to these things before they undergo the process of photosynthesis and what happens to these things after is going to be the focus of what we're going to talk about today so hopefully you recognize that carbon dioxide actually moves into the leaf directly through the stomata that we've actually just mentioned before. Um, oxygen moves out of the leaf, also through the stomata, all right? Water moves into the plant through the root system, all right? And the plant is gonna collect sunlight in the chlorophyll of the leaves. And then if we were to actually look inside a leaf, we would find that there's glucose that has been produced in there, okay? But how do we actually move these things? How do we get this water up the plant all right because obviously we're not going to be doing photosynthesis in the root system and how do we get the glucose down to the roots because there isn't glucose naturally in the roots okay so different 
Uh, well, so plants have different kinds of tissues which they use um, to actually um, undergo different functions. It's a lot simpler than animal tissues where we have um, nervous tissue and um, uh, muscle tissue, for example. All right. Um, we're going to have just three different types of tissues in plants. The first kind of tissue is the outside tissue, which is the dermal tissue, which is just used for protection. All right, and when we say protection, we mean protection from bugs, such as and viruses, so what we call pathogens, things that cause disease. All right, um, and then we're also going to get protection from water loss. Cool. The second kind of tissue, which is called ground tissue, all right, is actually a really important kind of tissue because here we're going to have, well, one, we're going to have storage of nutrients and glucose, but we're also going to have the site of photosynthesis. So that happens in the ground tissue. Vascular tissue, on the other hand, is the last kind of tissue, and it's all about transport. Let's break down this vascular tissue a little bit more. So there's two different kinds of vascular tissues. Um, we have xylem and we have phloem, okay? Xylem vascular tissue carries water and minerals from the roots to the leaves for photosynthesis. And because xylem vascular tissue is actually just carrying mostly water, we're actually gonna have the xylem move one directional, okay? Always moving from the roots. So if you imagine the roots of the plants are up here, to the leaves, so to the top of the plant, okay? Because it's gonna be carrying that water that's needed for photosynthesis. Phloem vascular tissue, on the other hand, is actually gonna carry food, which we call carbohydrates, which really is this, the more complex forms of that glucose that we're gonna perform, um, get from photosynthesis. And because we're gonna get that from photosynthesis, we're gonna produce that in the leaves and we're gonna carry that around the plant for use or for storage, all right? So flow and vascular tissues can actually move both directions, okay? Um, one good way that, that I think to remember which one's xylem, which one's phloem, is like this, okay? Phloem, that PH sound, makes the same sound as the F in food, all right? So you, you're going to remember that phloem is food for food, all right? So that's where we're going to get the glucose. Right. Xylem, on the other hand, a bit, a bit of a worse way to remember, but it's not a bad way. Xylem, X and W in the alphabet, so xylem carries water. Okay. All right, so how are we can actually get movement, especially movement of water in the plant? Let's talk about that. This is a process that we call transpiration. Right, and transpiration is actually quite a interesting process because how it works is we get water molecules coming into the roots, but how do they defy gravity and work their way all the way up to the top of a tree, for example, is because at the very top of the tree, if we were to look at the a cut out of a leaf, we're going to get water loss through those stoma or the stomata, right? By losing water there, we're actually creating a pressure which actually sucks up the water from the roots. So we get the water from the roots moving up, right? How that is is because each and every water molecule is actually attracted to itself, okay? And so because of this, all that water is gonna move up the tree because it's gonna be essentially sucked up the tree due to the loss of water at the very top, at the leaves.